Well, I've got a video for you today, guys. It's how to repair a toilet seat. Woohoo! That's what I was thinking. So, is it worth repairing a toilet seat? Absolutely not. 99% of the time. It's just your time and effort is not going to be worth it. But can you believe I tried to look up a replacement? It took me ages to find it. That's the first thing. What a waste of time looking for, you know, trying to get uh, the exact same toilet seat because I didn't know what it was. I didn't have a label. There's no labels on it. I didn't install the thing. 250 quid they want, and it's got to come from Italy. So there's probably a long lead time on it. This is an absolute nightmare replacing toilet seats. And the reason is, these days at least, because we allow these designers to come up with these stupid designs that are very specific. You know, they, they do a small batch of these toilets and then they discontinue them and then you can't get the replacement toilet seat. The, the alternative is they replace the entire toilet, which in my case, because I spent so long fixing it beforehand, the leak I had, uh, it's now secured in place and it would take me probably a day to get the thing out and then put a new one in at least. So I've got to factor that in. So I, I'm sure this is not going to work for most people's cases, but if I can repair this, then it may be useful for for you or it may be useful if you're repairing a bathtub or any other white goods inside a bathroom. So it's, it's the same process. So the first thing I had to do was glue this thing back together. And I did that with... Epo epoxy adhesive, in this case Araldite. Clamp. Most important thing is you clamp it together, uh, and then it will it will be strong. That feels really solid to me. So I think I'm um, no worries about that actually holding together. But it does look god awful ugly. The next thing we're going to do is to we need to hide these cracks and, sc and scratches, which is not going to be easy. But I've got one of these enamel bath re repair kits so that's what I'm going to use but anytime you're filling anything even in a house walls whatever you need to create a channel for this product to go in like for example here where the crack is you've got no there's nothing for the actual filler to you know sit in or bond to so what will happen is you'll sand it off and then you'll end up back at square one so the first step we're going to do is to gouge out a channel, a V-shape in here. Now I don't want to go too crazy on here because I've got glue in here. I don't want to take the glue out too much, but I've got to take a little bit out so that the the enamel repair will, which is also an epoxy, will actually fill it up. So that's what we're going to do now. I do actually have a Dremel, but it's not powerful enough. So I have to be very careful. So you kind of have to damage it more in effect before you can repair it so I'm cutting at one angle on one side like I say I really really don't want to spend too much time on this If I can get this done in like two or three hours, then it was probably worth it. So, and then we go to the other side and do the same thing. All right, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a there's a groove in there now. So I'll just finish that off and then come back to the next stage. I've gouged out the rest of those grooves, front and back. And now we just need to make sure it's all clean. So I'm going to get a rag, a bit of methylated spirits, or some other sort of cleaning alcohol. Not white spirit because that leaves an oil, oily surface on there. So I just rub that all down. And that will evaporate within a minute or two. Okay, so that's now ready for us to apply the epoxy. I've got myself a little board here to mix up on. We're now going to get onto the epoxy 
filling stage. Just want just for a bit of fun, I'm going to read you this dodgy manual they've sent, or just a little bit from it. To use a special resistant to yellowing epoxy resin and a suitable curing agent has caused a Turing point in the field of repairs of enamel and ceramic surfaces. A new plastic has been developed of improbable covering force. A micrometer layer is enough to cover thoroughly a damaged coating. <laughs> well, it makes me laugh, these things. Well, I mean, it's pretty much useless. I don't understand half of what it says. Uh, I mean, I'm guessing it's when it says things like, apply the composite to the loss. I assume that means the hole. God knows. Anyway, it, it's not rocket science. I think the key thing it does say on there is that I need to apply... 30 drops of curing agent and uh, five grams of the the epoxy. So that is 20 grams. So we're going to do about a quarter of a tube. I'm not going to bother measuring it out. I don't know how you would do that without some scales, which a tradesman is not going to realistically have with him. Some jewellery scales, something stupid like that. I'm probably going to need that much. So I'm going to squeeze out five grams and then and then I'm going to add the hardener bit by bit. Well, it's not a lot actually, five grams. Oh, let's see how we go. So that's five grams. And I don't have the mixing spatula anymore, so I've just got a plastic packer and a metal blade to see if that works. In fact, even a Stanley blade would work. And I've got a toothpick as well. They do suggest something sharp and pointy to stick into the, the hole. So let's have to turn the caps around to puncture these things. There we go. Right, so one, oh, two, three, 28, 29, 30. Yeah. scratch the the other side here so I'm gonna fill that in as well chance of this matching up exactly is it probably all right in a bathtub because you won't may not notice that little spot it's always going to look slightly different to what's surrounding but I guarantee you this will stick out so my final solution would be to um, spray the thing, spray the whole thing. I think that's the only way you're going to hide it all. Okay, we need to mix up the rest of that now. Okay, so we're just going to go and fill that in and leave it to dry for half an hour. When it's semi-soft, or semi-cured rather, then you can come along and scrape off a few more layers and then you let it dry for 24 hours. So I had to leave it a bit longer, probably because of the cold weather. And now we can just scrape off any excess. And it's going to make life so much easier when we come to do the sanding because obviously it's a bit too much here well, we'll go through clean that up and then and then come back to you 
Okay, so I've scraped off all of the excess. It was just as well I did. And I mean, essentially that's what it's gonna look like in the end, which is obviously not very nice. So I'm gonna to have to get some sort of spray paint, spray the whole thing. We'll rub, we'll let this dry, rub this down and then spray the whole thing. And then hopefully it'll be good as new and save myself 250 quid. That is the goal. <clears throat> Since I've scraped most of it off, I probably could get away with just wet or dry paper. This is, I'm starting off with 80 grit. As I say, I can't leave it like this, so I'm gonna have to paint it. So I don't actually care too much if there's a lot of scratches, you know, micro scratches in the top. Because it's gonna get painted. So just keep, Sanding that down until, until it feels smooth, which it does there already. What have I done? Well, what you can do at this stage now is to polish it if you wanted to. This is, say for example, if you're doing it in a bathtub or this is gonna be your final finish, you've got just a tiny little blob. You just wanna hide it as much as possible. Now you can use a special compound or abrasive like this it's super super fine and then you use one of these buffing wheels stick it in your drill and away you go you do it that way Wipe it off afterwards. Just get some water. Makes a bit of a mess to begin with, but you can get it off afterwards. As I say, you don't have to necessarily do this, but in my case, because I've got so many horrible lines in here, I need to paint this thing so I'm going to start off with a primer um, you can see I've already put a coat on here but the first thing I do was scuff it up with a bit of sandpaper just rub the whole thing down make sure you've got a good key now I don't care that whether it's glossy or not I'm going to be finishing it with paint then I'm going to use this white spray part primer and then we're going to finish it off with a top coat of paint now this one says build it up in layers which I found to be true just spray on it looks rather thin and then and every 10 minutes put on a second coat. So I've done the front. You can probably just about see the, the original cracks there, but now it feels all smooth and everything. Once the paint goes on the second layers, it will be better. So, you know, give it a shake till you hear the ball rattling. I'm just gonna just spray about 30 centimeters away. Make sure it gets covered, but don't do too much. You will get run running of paint, which you don't want. The whole point of spray paint. Right, that's enough. That's one coat. I'm gonna come back in 10 minutes. Do a second coat and you'll see it will build up. At the moment it looks a bit thin, but that will change. Okay, so that's dried to a nice smooth matte finish. Left that for 24 hours. So now we're gonna move on to the top coat. So I've just got some, some white spray paint. I mean, not all whites are the same. You might wanna check that, but my one matches up quite well. And then I've got a respirator, of course. Already gave it a bit of a shake, so come on, he man. God, oh, dear. Oh, you have to press sides. Right, 
Just look closely to see if you get any runs. Put my mask on. I've skipped a couple of steps here. I've given the top of the lid a couple of coats now. You have to do that within an hour or 24 hours. I'm not really sure why, but obviously I'm, I'm just going for the out. So I've done my first coat of this, of the top coat. And just doing the second coat now. I guess it may need a, another coat, we'll have a look shortly, but if not, then it's going to be fitting it back on the toilet. Okay, and there we have it. Toilet seat's been repaired, painted, and put back in place. I know it doesn't look quite the same colour as the, as the bowl, but then again, neither does the lid. And the, so they've just, it's actually discoloured the same colour as my paint. So that's fine. We're happy with that. Save myself 250, well, by the time I've spent a bit on paint and stuff, probably saved about 200 quid. Anyway, guys, I hope that was useful. Like I say, a few tips in there if you're like repairing chips in baths and things, same process. So good luck and on to the next one.